Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing a very special spotlight on petite palettes. We're actually going to be talking about the first ever eyeshadow palette I ever had. And it's from Too Faced. It was their boudoir eyeshadow palette, which you can't even see because it's washing it out. <laughs> But the very first eyeshadow palette I ever got, it was actually this one. I just bought a newer one not too long ago because this one is very, very old at this point. This palette right here, it's very beat up. It's very old. I haven't used this in years. Like, this is probably the oldest that I would keep an eyeshadow palette, but I don't use it. Honestly, I just keep it for the sentimental value of this is the first eyeshadow palette like I ever actually bought. It's very messy. It's very dirty. It's very old. Um, but when you first get the palette, it is absolutely stunning. You get like a little booklet with it. You get all these beautiful shades. Um, so when I got this palette, it was actually the first time I ever went to Sephora. And there was a whole story time with that because unfortunately, my first time in Sephora wasn't actually a great experience. Like I, it, it wasn't fun for me at all. Um, but it did start off my passion for makeup and it was the first time I actually had, you know, extra money after bills and after school and everything to spend on makeup and so I did buy a few things. So I thought I would go ahead and just share that story time with you guys as well as the look that I'm wearing today that I created with my newer palette, not the older one, and just make this a more sentimental spotlight on petite palettes since I do still have the original palette and I know that this is a palette that I will probably never ever declutter ever. So before we jump into the story time, don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you like Spotlight on Petite Palettes or if you want to see any other my first blank, I could talk about my first, you know, foundation, my first highlighter, my first everything. So I remember for the most part the first thing I bought in every category. So if you want to see more of these and more story times, let me know down below. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and hit the little bell icon so you're notified whenever I post a new video. Okay, so first off, the story time when I actually went to buy this. I was in college. It was like my last summer in college, I think it was. It was like the summer of 2014. Yeah, I was working two jobs at the time and I was doing an internship. So I was very, very busy. I was the very very beginnings of my makeup journey at the point where all I would do is like a little bit of eyeliner and I don't think I didn't even touch foundation until I was 20 so I'm pretty sure all I did was like eyeliner <laughs> eyeliner and I remember sometimes putting on a lipstick but it not looking the best so just eyeliner at this point and I really wanted to get more into eye makeup because at that point I'd seen so many beautiful eyeshadow looks I'd just started watching YouTube at the time and I was like oh these palettes look beautiful I really want a palette so one week that summer I actually worked a crazy amount of overtime due to an accident at one of the places I had been working. A lot of people worked overtime to like stay and help clean up. Like no one was hurt or anything but there was like a big flood in the building and so we all had to like work extra to clean it up but we all got paid time and a half for that overtime. So I got a decent paycheck the week after and paid all my bills early. You know I was young i was in college i didn't really party all that much so i had extra money i put a little bit aside for savings and the rest i thought you know what i'm gonna go for the first time i want to go to sephora i really want to go and pick up a nice eyeshadow palette and that was my goal so at the time i lived in washington dc and we had a sephora within walking distance which if just if that happened to me now if i lived within walking distance of a sephora now like i would just be broke broke but for the longest time it was like almost two years i lived within walking distance of both a lush and a sephora dangerous <laughs> but even though i lived so close i had never gone to the sephora before that point so i kind of dragged all my friends with me but she kind of stayed back and kind of waited outside the store she felt like really intimidated i felt really intimidated going in so i finally went inside first time in a sephora store it was just it was packed it was loud. There were so many beautiful things. I had no idea where to start. Where to start. One of my other goals, too, was to find something to help me with my eyebrows. Because at that point, my eyebrows, I think I had like over plucked my eyebrows at that point. Because they're so bushy and I couldn't afford to go and get them done all the time. I used to like to get them threaded. Um, so I would try to do my own brows and I wasn't really the best at it. So sometimes I would over pluck. So I really wanted an eyeshadow palette and I really wanted some products to help me with my brows. So since 
I had kind of an idea where I wanted to go with eyeshadow. I really wanted someone to help or just point me in the right direction for the brow products. So I grabbed someone's attention. She's walking by. She's like, oh, do you need help with anything? And I said, yeah, this is actually my first time here. You know, I've never been in Sephora. I'm new to makeup. I really need help starting with, um, like, eyebrow products. And her face, the woman who was helping me, uh, she just, like, got, like, not angry, but, like, annoyed and looked down at me. And she actually said that she said, honey, you're in the wrong store. I felt so bad and she like walked away and I thought like that was it like she just said that to me and she walked away and I was like oh my god like what have I gotten myself into why did I come in here so finally like she walked away like to my right and she turned back and said here's over here and then she pointed at the wall and then walked away <laughs> And I walked over and she had pointed me to the ABH display with like the dip brows and everything. Back then I had no clue what any of that was. I had even I didn't even know what a pomade was. So I looked at the wall, I felt really embarrassed, I felt really um intimidated. So I didn't get anything from ABH. I didn't get anything from my brows that day at all. So after that, I was just kind of like, oh, you know, I should just walk around and pick something, hurry up, and then just leave. So the one display that caught my eye out of the entire store was the Too Faced display. It was really soft and it was really pretty and it was pink and it was bright and it drew me right in and down there I saw they had a couple of the tin eyeshadow palettes and I absolutely fell in love with two of them. So the first one that I saw was the Boudoir Eyes and I don't know what it was about these shades that just drew me in. Like this was the first time like I looked at the palette and I was like, <gasps> like I need it. Like I looked at it and I was just sucked in. It had like the funniest names like fuzzy handcuffs and sugar walls and French tickler and lap dance. The names made me laugh. I loved these shades. I liked how they're kind of in trios if you wanted to use them like that. And I liked that it came with like a little booklet to help you get started. My first few looks I definitely used that booklet and I tried to follow them. I tried to look up tutorials and follow those as well. I picked up the boudoir eyes. I picked up the natural eyes palette also in the tin packaging and then I picked up a highlighter which I had at that point I had no idea what a highlighter was <laughs> but I saw it. It was also a Too Faced. It was the candlelit highlighter in like the warm shade. I still have it. It's actually this highlighter right here. I still have it. <laughs> It's a little old at this point. Let's not blind you guys. It's a little old at this point, but it is the Candlelit Glow Highlighter in Rosy Glow. So half of it is like a pearl. The other half is like a pink. I'm not sure about the shelf life of highlighters since both of these, well, this eyeshadow palette and this highlighter are both about five years old. They're the oldest products that I own. But honestly, at this point, I'm keeping them more for sentimental value than I am for actual like use. So I picked up the two eyeshadow palettes, the highlighter, and then I bought a brush set because at that point I didn't have any eyeshadow brushes at all. I don't know if they still sell it. If they do, I'll try to throw a picture up right here, but Sephora actually sold a like smoky eye eyeshadow brushes beginner kit kind of thing, and it was like a brush roll. Oh, thank you phone. And it was like a brush roll that came with like five eyeshadow brushes to do like the perfect smoky eye, and I was like, that would be perfect. So I got all that almost Altogether, it was almost like $200, but it was my first time at Sephora, and at that point, I felt like embarrassed and intimidated, so I kind of just got everything and then paid and got out of there. For the longest time after that, I did not go back to a Sephora. I didn't. Um, in that area, we didn't really have an Ulta. I, for the most part, ordered stuff online after that. I didn't really get to buy a whole lot of stuff while I was still in college, just because I was still in college and was on a budget. But I don't think I actually went back to a Sephora. I'm trying to think. It wasn't until like two years later, like, because I got a bunch of like Sephora gift cards for my birthday one year, and even then I was just ordering online. I wouldn't go back into a store because I felt so embarrassed and horrible. Um, but I did eventually go back into the store and I've never had a bad experience like that again. Most of the staff that I've worked with or most of the people that have helped me out have been like the nicest, the kindest people. And I think I told that story once to another Sephora employee at another store near DC and they got like really upset and they like called that store and they were kind of like I didn't want to ruffle any feathers but they were really upset that I had that kind of experience so 
what I'm trying to say is if you do have that kind of experience or if you're intimidated or scared that you might have that kind of experience there's always a chance but for the most part like the people at Sephora or at Ulta or at Mac like they look intimidating because they're so pretty and their makeup is so beautiful and like they're kind of just like at the door waiting for you to come in it's just getting over that first hurdle because once you're inside they're like the nicest people and they just want to help you out and they just want to help you get products and you want to get products and you want to get advice so it's it's for the most part it's a win-win so that was my experience my first time in sephora that's how i bought the boudoir eyes palette of course this is the original palette that i have right here all nice and messy a couple of weeks ago i went and rebought the palette because i really wanted to use it again and i felt the other one was a little too old for me to actually be using so i did use this palette on my eyes today for this look so let's go ahead and jump into the look i created with this palette today okay so for this look i really want to go like with like these purple smokely, smokely, smoky shades. Like I really want to use um, birthday suit in the transition, voulez-vous. And I want to jump into lap dance too, because I remember like sugar walls and lap dance being like the two shades that I absolutely loved in this palette. So I already primed and set my primer. I used the MAC Paint Pot in Painterly, and then I set it with In the Buff, this shade right up here at the top. So I'm going to take my big transition brush. I get a lot of questions about this brush. It's a really good brush from Morphe, actually. It's the Morphe M504, and I love using this for transition shades and whatever I throw, like, all over my lid, so... Next, I'm going to take Voulez Vous, this purple shade up here, and just start bringing that a little bit up into my transition, but not as high as I brought the first shade. Next, on the same brush, I'm going to take a little bit of lap dance down here and do kind of the same thing and just deepen up that shade. Next, I'm going to go in for my lid shade. I really want to take Sugar Walls, the shimmery shade right here in the middle. I'm going to take some glitter glue from NYX and just put that all over my lid. Okay, so I'm not personally the best at this, but I don't want to go in with like a harsh liner for this look. I kind of want it to look like soft and smoky. So I'm going to try to take a flat liner brush and just take French Tickler, which is like the black with the gold shimmer. And I'm just going to stamp that along my lash line to give the impression of liner while not actually using like a harsh liquid liner. Wish me luck. Well, it actually came out kind of the way that I wanted it to, surprisingly. I am not the best at doing, like, powder liner. Okay, so I'm going to jump off, just do some mascara real quick, and then we will be back. And then we will be back for the lower lash line. So for the lower lash line, I really want to focus on voulez-vous on the outer portion. I don't want to bring anything in too close, because I feel like with a smoky, blown-out look like this, you could too easily get raccoon eyes. So I'm gonna take a little bit of Voulez Vous on a flat shader brush. Just take it right down here. And today for my inner corner highlight, I really wanna match it to my face highlight, which is the Becca Limited Edition Royal Glow Highlighter. I've been obsessed with this ever since I got it, so I'm just going to pop a little bit of this onto the inner corner. If you wanted to stay within the um, actual Boudoir Eyes palette, satin sheets would make a beautiful inner corner highlight. I just am a sucker for matching my face highlight to my inner corner highlight, so I like to do that whenever I'm going for like a full glam complete look. So let's take a little bit. And that's the final look. You could definitely go a lot lighter with this palette if you use just kind of like this corner right here. You can get a nice soft everyday look, which I used to use. If you look within my palette, those shades are the ones that are pretty much the most destroyed. But I just love the versatility in this palette. Even though there are only nine shades, there is a lot that you can do with it. So that's the look I created with this palette. Very soft, very smoky. I just keep forgetting how much I love this palette. Not only was it like my first palette, 
it's just these shades, these colors, like the textures are all just perfect. You got a good mix of mattes and shimmers in here. I liked that these shades are larger and then these ones are smaller. When I first got this palette, I thought like, oh, these are way too small for me to like use. I'm going to use them up. But no, like they're actually like perfectly sized because you're going to go through these ones at around the same rate you're going to go through these ones because they did a good job of picking out which shades should have been bigger versus which ones should be a little bit smaller. So that's everything for this very special Spotlight on Petite palettes. I hope you guys liked it. Don't forget to let me know down below what you want to see in the next Spotlight on Petite palettes or if you want to see another My First Blink story time. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I'll see you in my next video. Bye!